Alrighty, so we are in our last half of the director success path. To get there on your workstation, you're going to go to training and success paths and then click on the director. Um, if you are a superstar consultant or above, you will have access to this. If not, um, you won't have access. So once you promote to the next um, level, not level, title, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, once you promote, the next title will be available for you to work towards. So we're finishing that today. Uh, Star Director just came out yesterday, which is super exciting. Um, but as far as the recordings going through this together, we are going to um, just finish up Director. So we're on training course five right now, which is Master Workstation Reporting. Um... Hold on one minute. Okay, so master workstation reporting um, and set your sites director. We briefly discussed the bar report and how it can identify areas of focus for your business. Like I said, once you become a director, you can take a class on this as well. So that's super exciting. Um, <clears throat> So this area is just kind of going to dive into that a little bit. What you'll learn, discover how to use the bar to make informed business decisions and take control of your Sensi journey. This report is going to save you time, increase your effectiveness, and help you identify where to invest your effort um, and set and track goals. It tells you the story of your business's past performance and future potential. And each time you review your bar, bar you have an opportunity to shape your story and determine its direction. So <clears throat> it says <laughs> it's going to be a lot of data, um, but you should be able to access it on a desktop desktop or laptop. It's going to be really, I don't even know if you're able to, but it's going to be really hard to on a phone. So these are the columns in the bar report. So it's going to go over literally everything. I'm not going to read all those, but anything that you need to know for your business, it's going to be here. Um, the five key areas of focus are going to be these PRV, TWV, GWV, Active Frontline, and First Generation Directors. They correspond to the monthly requirement that you need to be paid at title. So obviously that's going to be most important. Um, <clears throat> so unlocking the full potential of the bar in business with these four steps. Ac assess your business, identify areas of focus, and set SMART goals. And then you're going to create that plan. So using the paid at title column to see if you meet the requirements for your current title. If so, great job. You're going to go on to step two, uh, focus on meeting the requirements to promote. If you aren't meeting these requirements, um, step two will help you identify areas to improve so you can be paid at title. So even just having that self-reflection of seeing, okay, out of the last 12 months, how many months have I been paid at title? That's going to be a huge area um, that you can focus on too. So with that, you're going to identify where you need to focus on. Honestly, without the bar report, you probably know exactly what you need to do. But if, if not, if you want to see it in the numbers, this is going to show you. Then you're going to set your SMART goals um, to for those focus areas <clears throat> and then creating a plan. It even has these little clickable items that you can go into for each step to help you do that. So to create that goal and to create a plan on how you're going to do it, um, it is literally a step-by-step -step process of how you're just going to have to do the action from the how. Um, all right. So <clears throat> Downline performance reports, this is so important as a leader because it's not just about your business anymore, right? It's going to be about your downline's business. So seeing their performance reports offer insights into your team daily activity, excuse me, unlock their power and gain valuable insights to support your team and achieve your goals. So unleash the power of downline performance reports. You're going to be able to stay informed by seeing their progress throughout the month and identify where they need help. <clears throat> You'll be able to level up your leadership um, by using report insights for targeted conversations, uh, tailoring the, the reports to your needs, and saving time. 
uh, to craft a custom report. Um, this example is you want to identify team members close to achieving active status and paid title status. Here's how to create a custom report to target those specific areas. Um, <clears throat> think of the view function as a zoom lens and select team in the view drop down menu for this example and click run report. This is a new development in reporting. So this has all changed here recently. So if you haven't been running reports, now's the time to get back into doing that because things have changed. Um, <clears throat> if you want to get into specific details within that um, view, you can, um, it says here, include the five areas of focus and other impactful fields like new recruits, will cancel, join date, and titles. To identify team members close to achieving active or paid at title status, click additional filter options. And then you're going to set that PRV range of 150 to 499 to click and click run report. <clears throat> you can sort however you see best. So this has it sorting by PRV. You just click the column header and it's going to see, um, it's going to sort. You can either do ascending or descending. And then if you want to save that report, you literally just click the save report button. It's super easy. And then you can name it. Um, those save reports are going to be part of your downline report section of the um, performance overview page. So once you have that saved, you can go and, you know, <clears throat> easily click that or easily run that with the click of a button. So figuring out what reports you want to save if you're not sure which ones you want to save, think about uh, things you look up throughout the month and write those down and then consider saving those to make it easier so you don't have to run those every day. Um, all right, so taking advantage of the upcoming workstation reporting and bar certification workshops to better understand the powerful tools there, everything is literally at your fingertips with the workstation reports. And again, <clears throat> with the director success pass, that is something that you should be doing as a director. All right, so next is a guide to scalable systems. How systems help you as a leader. Um, this just talks about for a business leader like you, it's critical to have those systems that are scalable. Um, it applies just as well to 10 customers as it does to 100 customers or 50 team members or 500. Um, we always talk about having those systems and starting them early. So as you grow, you um, already have them in place and it's already part of your business structure. Um, all right. So this is going to be a little, oh, it's only one minute. It says two minutes, but one minute video. Um, oops on <clears throat> leveraging systems in your business to be more productive and save you time. Um, I do like to recruit a lot. So when you do have a lot of recruits, you have to have systems. I mean, if I'm trying to reach out to multiple people on different levels, one signed up on day one of the month, one signed up day 15, day 13, whatever, they're at different so you have to have systems to help you as a leader stay on check on where they're at, how to help them with what. And I think systems help me stay keep my business running. If not, I would probably go a little crazy trying to remember where everyone's at. Saying, oh, they're on their launch party. Okay, they're on this level. They're on this level. You have to know where they're at in the business. And I think that's one reason why systems is good is to help you focus on helping them when they have questions and not necessarily knowing where everyone's at because you have your system set and already helping them. Okay, so there are significant demands on your time. We all know this. Um, not only are you balancing the work you do, but you're to take care of your customers, but family, other responsibilities. Um, so with that, Understanding the value and importance of consistency, efficiency, and effective time management is going to be super important. Systems can help structure, provide a structure or framework and play a huge role in helping you thrive as a leader. So here are a few ways to help. 
Sys eliminate the guesswork. Systems can help provide clarity to simplify your decision-making process when common situations arise. In those cases, there's no need to resolve a problem. Um, and redesign a, pr a response because thinking and working has already been done, right? So once you have it set up, you can just run that system. It's going to save time and energy for the same reasons. You're going to be able to streamline some of your common tasks into a process and then foster consistency. So team and customer focused systems can help you maintain a standard of quality, ensure a consistent positive experience for them that will further establish you as a reliable consultant and leader. So things like a morning routine or daily checklist, we have again, those daily and weekly checklists that um, we have provided many times. They are in our um, Facebook group as well as our Google Drive. But being able to know what you need to do at minimum that day is super helpful. And then at the end of the day, knowing that you got the min minimum done. <clears throat> Those weekly or monthly calendars. So we have that planning ahead document. But just being able to break down what you're doing in your business weekly and monthly, and then standard processes. So pre-built pre templates, task checklists, um, or scripts can be a huge uh, time saver when you're not sure what to say or do. So um, let's go on to the next one. So a guide to scalable systems. What are the characteristics? characteristics of a great system that will make a huge difference for you. So maybe you already have some in place. This is going to be a way for you to have that reflection with the current system. So it's simple. A great system should streamline tasks in a way that simplifies your life. And then a good test for that is because you teach someone else how to do it with relative ease. If not, we need to be able to simplify that, especially as a leader, because what you're doing needs to be repeatable from for other people. Um, it's effective. So does the system positively impact your key business results, either directly or indirectly? It's personalized. Um, do you enjoy or look forward to doing it? Because if it's a system that <laughs> you don't like, you're most likely not going to do it. And then is it scalable? Is your system something that you will be able to implement effectively for all of your team members, even as your team size or customer base doubles or triples? Um, so again, it needs to be repeatable for any size. So having that self-reflection on your current systems is huge and taking the time to have that reflection on those as well. So design, implement, and measure business systems. Five steps to create and utilize systems that help you stay consistent, save time and energy. Um, for simple systems, complex systems, and everything in between, it's important to make sure that they meet their purpose. So here are five steps to help you design or implement a new system. Pick a task, determine the system type, research best practices, design your system, and implement and evaluate. Um, to break it down a little bit more, identify a calming reoccurring task that makes us a significant amount of your time, energy, or resources. If it's not commonly recurring, then it's not going to be a good candidate for a system. Um, so for example, onboarding a new, cons new consultant, how do you do that? Recognizing individual team members, efforts, milestones, and achievements. Um, those are two great examples of things that you should be doing reoccurring in your business. Figuring out what the system type is going to be. So whenever a new LTO is announced, for example, you're going to run an order history report. You're going to create those social media posts, and then you're going to create and schedule posts, encouraging your team to do the same. Um, the, these are all just really step-by-steps -step of how to have that system in place. Again, it's not anything crazy. It's not anything long and exaggerate. It's keeping it simple and just doing and treating these tasks the same. If it's um, calendar-based, which is, I love for my tasks to be calendar-based if I can, um, but running, um, having that once per month, um, happy mail for top 10, right? Or team Facebook shout outs for all who recruited. recruited. So we have active by the 5th, 500 by the 
15th, stuff like that, that we have set in place for our team and our group um, to make sure that people are being shouted out for that kind of thing. Um, and then it says every day before breakfast, I do these four things, check PRV, TWV, GWV, read the news section, check emails and create a to-do list. Every Wednesday I go live while I replace the wax in my warmers. I call it Wax Wednesday. Again, just examples of what you could be doing or start putting in place. Um, research best practices. That's just going to be, you know, finding what works best for you. This is the biggest thing that I'll always say is you don't need to recreate the wheel. Um, plenty of people have gone ahead of us to do these things and be successful in them. So using what someone else is sharing in this business is a huge plus. And that's why I'll always recommend is to try what someone else is sharing. Um, and all right, designing your system. Why is this important? Clarify your objective. Make sure you can clearly articulate what your system is intended to accomplish. Map out the processes by indicating the steps and tasks. Create assets and automations that will make your task easier. And then figuring out when you will do it. So on a schedule or calendar. And then, of course, the most important thing that we always say is putting that system into action. Following the steps, the task timelines that you design, um, making sure that it's simple, scalable, using something new is going to take time, right? So you may not, it may not be great right away, but finding if it meets your intended objectives and outcomes, if it's simplified things for you, if you're more productive, um, and then obviously always looking for ways to improve it. Um, a few other things to consider. Don't try to implement too many new systems at once. So pick one, implement it, get good at it, and then move to the next. Um, if you redo everything you're doing in your business and then you don't do it, again, that's not going to be helpful to you. So to take one, one task that you can uh, make a system and make it a simple, scalable system, and then see if that helps you in your business. All righty, we're just cruising right through. <clears throat> All right, strategies for sustainable success. This is our last one, our last training course. So, excuse me, as a Sensi director with a growing team, looking after your own well-being is more important than ever. This course will explore strategies for managing stress and prioritizing self-care. So managing your stress to avoid burnout, identifying the signs of burnout and learn effective stress management strategies is what we're going to be going over. This is so important as a leader. And just in your business, being an independent business owner is, is, stressful in itself without a team. So stress is your body's natural response to a demanding or challenging circumstance like a looming deadline or public presentation. It isn't just a feeling of worry, but an entire psychological and cognitive response your body initiates. So while little stress can be motivating, chronic stress can drain your energy and impact your well-being. This is often referred to as burnout. So some of the signs of burnout is loss of motivation, self-doubt, feeling detached, constant fatigue, difficulty sleeping, changing it, changes in appetite. And here are some ways that you can manage that before you get to that burnout stage. So remembering why you're here, remember your why, that's going to change over time. But taking that self-reflection, that time to self-reflect, to say, why am I doing this? What is my goal? Why am I here? And then focusing on what matters. So it's going to be the IPAs, what you enjoy doing, what uh, parts of your business inspire you or motivate you or keep you going. All of that is super important. The Pareto principle suggests that approximately 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. That's crazy. Once you identify the 20% of the activities that drive the most significant results in your business, you can let go of the un unproductive activities, freeing yourself to work in a calmer and more receptive frame of mind. 
Um, so that 80-20 rule of your Scentsy business. Y'all can check this video out on your own, The Discipline Pursuit of Less. Um, and then here are some key strategies for you to manage stress and pervert, prevent burnt, burn out. Blah. Setting those boundaries, so specific times that you're going to disconnect from work. You can't always be on Scentsy Go. Um, you need to be able to recharge and be fully present in your personal life, um, which is hard. Again, you're an independent business owner. It's going to be hard to turn that off and just say, yes, I'm on social media, but no, I'm not working my business right now, right? Uh, learning the art of saying no. Don't be afraid to decline requests that don't align with your priorities or schedule. It doesn't make you a bad leader. It effectively manages your time and reduces stress will be a great example for your team. Being direct and kind, acknowledge the request, briefly explain, explain why you're unable to fulfill it and maintain a respectful tone. Offer alternatives, empower growth. So transforming the no into an opportunity to help your team member develop a new skill. They'll get a chance to grow and you get to delegate effectively. And then always ending on a positive note. So it literally gives you the steps of saying no, because a lot of people have problems with that. The time you free up by applying these practices should be spent connecting with others and focusing on what truly make, motivates you. Remembering that your journey will have its ups and downs. Be kind with yourself throughout it all. And then we're going to talk about the specifics of time management to help you conquer your most important tasks with ease. So... Do you ever feel like you're constantly on the go, but never getting anywhere? You're not alone. Around 80% of people do not feel that their work is under control on any given day. The good news is that there are many effective time management systems to help boost your productivity. Monitor. To be effective with time management, it's important to understand where your time is being spent. Whether you use a timer and notepad or a time tracking app, evaluating time spent on your task will likely reveal areas of opportunity. You might be surprised by how much time you spend on a seemingly simple task, or you may discover that the most important tasks in your business don't take as much time as you thought. No matter your findings, keep notes so you can adjust your schedule accordingly. So it has a little tip. For the next week, make notes of how much time you spend on business-related tasks. Most time management struggle falls into two categories, limited time or difficulty focusing. Let's tackle the first challenge, prioritizing tasks when you feel like they're just not enough hours in the day. So the urgency importance matrix, which is right here, allows you to identify uh, the task and base it on the urgency of importance. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a list of all your tasks. This is how I made up the weekly and monthly tasks list um, by writing all that down. And then evaluating and putting this into each appropriate table based off how you feel or what you think. Um, so when you have all those test tasks divided up, you're going to schedule time for the do first task soon um, and schedule the important and not urgent tasks for later. So same thing with your day. Uh, group tasks, reduce the mental time consumed in switching context by grouping similar tasks together and completing them in batches. For example, you can respond to all emails or send all follow-up messages in the same time block. Uh, the other is focusing. So if you struggle to stay on task, consider using the Pomodoro technique. Work in focus timed intervals separated by short breaks. The short bursts of focus work are highly effective for complete tasks that require concentration and the breaks help prevent mental fatigue. The most popular version of this is a 25 minute interval with a five minute break. However, you can change that to what you think you need, shorten or lengthen on your availability. Um, for example, sending out Happy Mail can be broken down into micro ta tasks like gathering customer addresses, creating samples, assemble the packages, and then to mail them. <laughs> um, that's a great example because that is something that is hard for me to sit down and do all at once. So this example I really relate to because the micro tasks, this could even just be one day at a time. Um, the key is to be disciplined. 
Once you start, you cannot allow yourself to be interrupted or allow yourself to extend the interval. This discipline boosts productivity and motivation. So schedule single intervals throughout your day or a concentrated number of intervals in a few hours. Be intentional. Have your task list on hand to avoid wasting time. Give it five. If you're struggling with procrastination, set a timer for just five minutes and start working on that task. You might be surprised with how much you can get done. And then reduce distractions. Silence your phone. Use app blockers. Find a quiet workspace. All that is going to take a lot of intentionality. But if it's something that's important to you, then we will make it happen. We'll do the things that we need to do. Time management is a continuous journey. So don't be afraid to adjust your approach along with along the way. Remember, the goal is to feel empowered and in control of your time, not overwhelmed by rigid schedules. And then making self-care a priority. Recharge and refocus through self-care. Um, scroll through social media and you're bound to see posts about self-care, face masks, luxurious bubble baths, endless TV marathons, but it's much deeper than that. Self-care involves making informed choices to nurture your physical and mental well-being, leading to better overall health and stronger relationships. The best self-care is personal. Taking small daily actions to target your specific needs. Consider the following questions to identify areas for improvement. Physical, am I tired, sluggish, or in pain? Mental, am I overwhelmed, anxious, or lacking motivation? And then relationships, do I feel supported and comfortable communicating with my loved ones? Um, self-care activities, this is really going to depend on you. So self-care should not feel like a chore. It, it should be something that um, is going to help you and that you enjoy doing. So moving your body, these are examples of physical, uh, eating fresh food, investing in comfort, treating yourself, getting outside, resting, um, mental options are reading a book, journaling, doodling, doing a do your do it yourself project, find a quiet place to focus um, without judgment. And then relationships, connecting, reaching out to loved ones, having lunch with friends, calling your family, giving back. So volunteering at a local charity and then seek spiritual connection. This can be through a formal religious practice or acts of service for your community, whatever one fits you best. Overcoming self-care obstacles. Again, lack of time. <laughs> Use those website blockers or timers to help you with that. Scheduling that self-care time can help, even if it's a five-minute walk. I love that. Uh, guilt, challenge, negative beliefs. Self-care isn't selfish. It's essential. Thinking of putting on your oxygen mask first on an in-flight emergency. You can't help others if you're not well yourself. Practicing those daily affirmation and surrounding yourself with supportive people. Stress, start small with a simple practice such as drinking a glass of water or going for a walk, creating a self-care menu with options, communicate your commitment to self-care with a trusted friend or support. Remember that self-care is an ongoing process. Your needs may change, so be flexible and adjust your routine accordingly. Um, and then it has this 30-day self-care challenge. Choose and schedule new self-care activities to complete daily after 30 days. Celebrate your success and reflect on how this challenge impacted your well-being. Success is not a journey. Remember that success is a journey, not a destination. As you continue to grow your business, new challenges and opportunities will arise. So explore the Mind Your Business workshop to help you cultivate a growth mindset, develop resiliency, and structure your business for long-term success. Um, if you are a director, that will be emailed out to you along with the other courses once they are open. So that is it. Training for director is done. Like I said, if you're a director or above, you do have the Star Director Success Path now. That came out yesterday. So... If you're in a good spot in your business where you're being paid at title as a director consistently, then that star director success path is going to be your next step. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.